Hi, everybody. Today I decided to bring you along as I attempt to construct something that <clears throat> I've been meaning to do for a long time. You, some of you may have been with me when I made this assemblage. And I made it from, I'm holding my iPad, so if I'm a little shaky, sorry. But I made it from one of these Tim Holtz um, configuration boxes. And it's basically one big box, and then there's little boxes that fit inside. And you can leave them all in or take some out to create bigger spaces and then fill them with whatever assemblage pieces you want to use. So in light of that... A long time ago, I started collecting boxes, all sizes and shapes and whatever boxes. Anything that I thought, gee, that's sturdy, I'm going to throw it in the cupboard. I'm going to take you down. You won't be able to see all the way to the back, but in this cupboard, see if I can get it to focus better, in this cupboard are boxes, lots of boxes. They go all the way to the back, top to bottom, front to back boxes. Okay, uh, I went through all the little boxes and I put a piece of cardboard underneath so that we have a base to glue these all to and then these will all get covered with paper of some sort. Um, some of these have like little inserts in them. This was from an iPhone, I think. Yep, iPhone 4. That's an oldie. That's where I'm at. Um, those were the ones that I found that fit the best. I have one little square of backing showing there that I can just cut. So to start with, I'm going to number the backs of these so I remember the configuration. <laughs> and then I'm going to paint that cardboard piece and probably cover the back of it with some book paper and then <clears throat> I will be back and show you how I'm going to cover all these little boxes to make a cohesive um, shadow box or box frame or whatever you want to call it and then we can start building an assemblage inside of it. I'll be back. Okay I put just regular white gesso on here and just scraped it on with a plastic card and then on this side I put some maps from an old textbook early 1900s textbook so now I want to get some color on here not that a lot of this is going to show but the edges will and um, I don't if you follow Tim Holtz or use a lot of Ranger Tim Holtz products, you know that they came out with um, Distress Ink in an archival format, so it is permanent once it's dry. And there's like a almost a three-hour video on Tim Holtz's um, account explaining all the new products and black soot, ground espresso, um, smoke, the gray color, and there was another one. There were four and they were bundled in a package. They were the size of the archival ink but in, a, in the distress colors but permanent archival ink. And by the time I got to Stampers Anonymous or Ranger or all the places that they were sold out like immediately. So I wanted them. <laughs> I didn't want to wait. So what I did was I bought the Custom Blend Distress Ink pads. So they come with no ink in them. Just a, you know, a plain empty pad. No ink, no color. And then I bought the Re-Inkers in the archival ink in ground espresso and I also did the same thing for the black soot and then I just took my blending tool and put some color on the lid and wrote on it anyways um, that's an option should you want something one of the colors 
hopefully they'll come out with more. There are several now in the archival ink that are in the distress colors. Anyway, I'm going to use the ground espresso archival distress ink and I'm just going to go around the edges here. And of course I got a dip right there. Maybe I'd be better off with a blending tool. Get down in there and move this around. Okay, so waterproof. So let's bring back the boxes here. I have them sitting in their correct order, I think. And then once I get them covered and then glued down, then I can decide the orientation. I have it sitting that way because you guys could see the whole thing, but I may end up going this way or turn it completely around this way we'll just we'll just see i may end up with the inserts inside the boxes uh, maybe not use them at all or maybe just put that one this one came out of a box like that it was for the iphone actually it sat on top of here but i can raise things up in there can do whatever I want to do so um, yeah so it's going to take a while to get these covered um, and you might say well why not just paint them but a lot of them are real shiny and that's not going to take paint very well or hold the paint very well so and then, you know, some are brown and some are white, and this one's black, and this one's beige or whatever. So I think it's just going to be easier to cover them. And I, I might just cover them all in pages from a Yellow Pages book. I think that's probably what I'll do. I don't want a lot of, like, a patchworky background um, kind of look. I want it to all be pretty cohesive and look the same everywhere so that's going to take a while I will work on that and when they're all covered and colored and dry and glued down to the backing I'll be back and I'll start pulling some things to put inside so it would be fun if some of you if you have some little boxes and you want to play along um, you know you can easily get it to this point I think I will also um, get some color over the map on the back of, let's, let's see if I can't scooch these all over the way they belong. Makes it easier later. And I may put some color on here too. It's still a little tacky, so I'm going to wait until this is really dry. I dried it a little bit with the heat tool. Um, for me, it could even be tomorrow or the next day before I get back to you after everything gets covered and colored and dried and glued. Um, but for you, I'll be right back. I put blending solution, alcohol blending solution on my mat and then added some Dijon alcohol ink. Picked it up with my blending tool with a felt pad and just went over... Um, this whole surface. Now it 
it will be waterproof, but it won't be alcohol proof. Anything with a solvent base that gets on this will lift the color. But chances of that happening once it's all done, and this is actually the back of the assemblage piece, I mean, if you're going to hang it <clears throat> or even sit it somewhere, the chances of it getting alcohol on the back of it is pretty slim. So not too worried about that. So I just wanted to um, show you what I did. just kind of brings all that old paper and those colors all together a little bit more. So another fun thing you can do with alcohol ink. Okay, one more step is done. Um, I covered the boxes inside and outside with um, just pages from the telephone book. Yes, there still is such a thing as a telephone book. <laughs> Mine's mighty skinny these days, but um, it it's I like it for the pages for collage and mixed media. So, anyways, and I just noticed that. I missed doing the inside of this one, so I'll have to catch that. Um, the other thing that I did was I have this fabric tape, Tim Holtz Ideology fabric tape, and I used the ledger um, design and went around the edge of my cardboard just to cover up, you know, the rough or the raw edge of the cardboard. So that's where I'm at. I'll finish glue and paper inside of that one and then I think I'm going to use some alcohol ink just to color these I'm just going to make them all the same so that's the next step and when that's done I'm going to let the, the glue on these I use matte medium I'm going to let that dry overnight and then I will use the either I might use some watered down fluid acrylic or alcohol ink. I'm not sure which. I want something that's going to be permanent though. So when I start gluing stuff in, I don't want color to be lifting on me. So that's where I'm at. When I'm done coloring them, I'll be back. Okay. Um, I rethought and rethought and rethought what I wanted to color these boxes with. I knew I didn't want to use anything that was going to remain water soluble because I didn't want to mess when I went to glue stuff in. Um, I thought about using some color wash tint by by Tattered Angels and I looked that up and those also remain water soluble. So I just went back to good old acrylic paint. I used burnt umber, fluid acrylic, watered it down. A bunch on my brush and just brushed them on. I got the good old grungy look going which you know I love. So that's where I'm at. These are going to dry. I'll let them dry for several hours and then I will glue them together on the cardboard. We're well on our way now. We're almost to the fun part. So I just thought I would pop on and give you a look at where we're at at this point. Um, I didn't bother to cover the bottoms of the boxes because they're going to get glued down. Letting these dry and then I'll glue them to the cardboard and then I will be back and we'll start building an assemblage in them. I'm back. This took forever and a day. It was quite a challenge. Um, but I'm liking it. It's I've auditioned and deleted and edited and this is the best that I have been able to come up with that everything is, is hitting my eye in the right way. Um, when I add something I know immediately that that'll work or I don't like it. So I've gotten it to this point and I think this is where it's going to stay. I may find something for in here that is a little bit elevated, but other than that, we're pretty much set. Um, nothing is glued in. The boxes are glued to the backing, but other than that, everything is just sitting. So like these marbles I want 
up at the top of this box, but oh, they're staying there now. Things are just kind of rolling around because they aren't glued down. So, and then the pieces like this that are elevated, oh, that screw doesn't go in there, that are elevated on another box, I will cover those boxes or maybe just paint them black before I glue everything in. Um, the small things are just elevated. I just have some of these little round wooden pieces, They're kind of like checkers, I guess. I do have some vintage checkers, but I like to save those for when you when you'll see them. So um, let's see what else did I want to show you. This will be glued to this, so that's what'll support that. But since it's not yet, it's just kind of hanging out in there like that. Um, I don't know if you can see this old tin type. I cut her down a little bit, and then I have this um, old card that buttons came on bone rings, I guess. Um, it's pretty beat up, but I I'm gonna put the old tin type that I cut down. Can you see her? It's kind of dark. And then again, like if the box isn't going to show, I don't even have to have it turned that way. That's enough support for it, I think. Just to give you an idea, if you want to do this, some of the uh, mechanics, another just a little jewelry box underneath there. This is a vintage Viewmaster reel. It is World's Fair 6465. But we don't care about all that because you really won't be able to read it anyways. So I'm just going to put that. This is from one of those Tim Holtz, the Urban Layers ephemera packs. That fit perfectly in there. And then this little divided iPhone box. I was happy that this lock thingy, I'll clean this up. But that fit perfectly. And then the key doesn't go all the way in, but that's okay. So, and the rest of the doodads and dominoes and, you know, game pieces, some more marbles. There's a little spoon down in there. And so, that's where I'm at. Oh, and this big spring. Let me get down off my stool. I was on my stool trying to get my camera moved up so that everything would fit. It just, I think you can just see it but once everything is glued down I'm gonna try to get this attached right here I just kinda like it there but right now it won't stay so that's where I'm at everything is just gonna get glued down but it's basically to the point of what you see is what you get the only other thing that I might do before I glue things down is this piece which was also from that Tim Holtz ephemera pack and the Viewmaster reel. I might just hit it to age it just a little bit with some vintage photo or something ink because they just are hitting my eye. Everything's really vintage looking and those are a little too pristine white for me. So uh, maybe the dye too. So, thanks for sticking with me. This has been about, I don't know, a week on and off. So, for you, not so long, but I'm glad you came along to see how I put this together and how you could make one if you'd like to. And it's just go through your junk drawers, your kids' games. You know, there's, I'm sure we all have a lot of stuff in our houses that we don't really need to use anymore but could be repurposed into something like this all those little boxes start saving them <laughs> so um yeah i i just enjoy doing it it's fun i have a lot of junk so it's i'm happy to to get some of it into a usable piece of art that somebody might enjoy so thanks again 
See you soon. In the meantime, go make some art. Bye.